Hey guys, I'm Patrick with fstoppers.com and for years I used to shoot weddings and have a hard time getting the prints that I would print in my office to match up exactly with what I was seeing on the screen. Well today I have the X-Rite i1 Studio along with the Color Checker Classic and I'm gonna show you how you can get consistent color across all of your devices starting from capturing the image on set all the way to printing a final image. So we have just wrapped up a shoot with Erica here. If you wanna see how we designed the lighting and got this final photograph, you can check out the video in the link below. But before we leave this set, we wanna make sure we take one reference photo with the X-Rite color checker so that we have something to base the perfect white balance off of. Now in this shoot, we could go really crazy with the colors, but imagine if we were shooting for a designer and she wanted the colors to be absolutely perfect. We would wanna make sure we get that right on set. So I'm gonna have Erica hold up the color checker. We're gonna take a reference shot and that's gonna guarantee that every image that's imported into Lightroom comes in with accurate color. So Erica, go ahead and pull the color checker up by your face. I'm gonna take a test shot here. And with this image, not only are we going to be able to get accurate skin tones, but we're gonna be able to get accurate color across the entire scene. So now that we got a handful of great images and we have our final image with the color checker, let's go into Lightroom and do the next step. All right guys, so here we are in the post-production studio. It's been a few days since our shoot. And before I jump in here and start editing the photos, there's a few things that we need to do. First and foremost, we need to calibrate our monitor. This monitor that I have here has not been calibrated. And if the monitor is too bright or the colors are off, of course, we're going to get inaccurate color. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to use the X-Rite i1 Studio along with their software to calibrate our monitor. Now, our monitor is going to be the first thing that we calibrate to a standard, and then from there, we're able to calibrate everything else in our office. Now, before we plug in the i1 Studio into our computer, we're going to go to xwritephoto.com slash get i1 Studio and download the software that's going to allow us to actually calibrate our monitor. So now that we've downloaded the software, we have it installed on our computer, let's go ahead and plug the i1 Studio into our USB cable. We're gonna go ahead and run the i1 Studio software. And here on the left, you're gonna see a bunch of different options. Obviously, you can calibrate your display. You can also do printers, which we'll do in a minute. You can also do things like your scanner as well, but we're gonna first start off with our display. So as you can see here, it's recognized our Dell monitor. Now, we're going to go ahead and set this display for a custom setting. And what that's going to allow us to do is change the white point, the luminance, and the gamma. Now we're going to go ahead and leave this on D65, which has become the industry standard for your white point. If we go to the luminance drop-down menu, a lot of people like to use 120. I find for me personally, I like 100. I think it's just a little more accurate, so I'm gonna choose that. And finally, there's the flare correct. If you have a really bright work environment, you may wanna check this box. That's just really gonna make more accurate color if you have a really reflective screen. I'm not gonna check that in our studio, but let's go ahead and hit next. So now what we have to do is we have to actually calibrate the device itself. And as you see here, there's a little LED light that glows white and it's gonna shine through the bottom. But right now we wanna move it like the screen says, one click over so that it's pointing actually to a dark part of this device. And you can see the calibrate button right here illuminates. Let's go ahead and hit that. So now that we have calibrated the i1 Studio itself, we're gonna flip this LED back down to the bottom position. And now we're ready to calibrate our monitor. So in order to rest this directly on our monitor, I'm gonna go ahead and put this calibration tool into this sleeve, and it just slips in like this, and then you can use the zipper here to enclose this. We're going to tilt the monitor back just so that it has a little bit of surface to grip, and I'm gonna put this weighted belt behind the monitor, and I'm just gonna place this directly on the screen itself. It doesn't really matter exactly where it goes, but you want it to be balanced and you probably want it in the middle of the monitor. I'm now going to hit the Start Measurement Process button. So as you can see, our X-Rite is positioned correctly, but we are going to calibrate everything. So I'm gonna make sure I check Contrast, RGB Controls, and make sure Brightness is checked as well. And then we're just gonna hit Next. So now we're gonna just let the monitor go through a series of color, contrast, and brightness. And then at the end of this series, it's going to tell us what we need to adjust. All right, so here we can see our RGB. We're basically adjusting color. And from this graph, red and green look accurate, but our blues are a little too saturated. So basically, I'm just gonna go through my monitor settings and I'm gonna find custom color. This is under the color setting. Just going to go over to the blue setting and it's at 100% right now. I'm just gonna hit down until I get a green check mark on the x right menu on the left. And for me, that's at 97%. So now I have all of my red, green, and blue correctly calibrated. 
I'm going to save this on my monitor and then hit Next on the display. So now the i1 Studio is going to go through a bunch of different colors to get a quality indicator check for brightness. And as you can see, it's saying that my monitor is a little bright. So I'm going to go into my display settings. And I'm going to go over to brightness and contrast. And I'm just going to start lowering the brightness until we get a check mark over on the left hand side of the screen. So you can see this monitor was extremely bright right out of the box and we did have to lower the brightness quite a bit. So now it's going to run through 118 different color patches to create a custom color profile for this monitor. All right, so we've made it through all of the patches. We can now take off the i1 Studio and we're going to hit next on the screen. So now I'm just going to save this color profile. It gives you a custom name here and basically this is going to allow you to turn off this color profile. Say if you're playing games, you're working in Photoshop or doing video, this is going to allow you to go back and forth between different profiles on your computer. Now that we have an accurate monitor, everything's been calibrated, let's go ahead and minimize the software and then we're going to go into Lightroom here and basically I want to go to our color checker file. This is the picture that we took with Erica that has the actual color right color checker classic in it. And this is going to guarantee that we get accurate colors like we saw on set. So as a photographer, you know that when you're on set, every single lens that you put on your camera produces a slight color variation. But we can actually account for these different colors by using the color checker to create a custom profile that will give us accurate color. So it's a pretty good idea to get in the habit of taking one of these reference photos with the color checker anytime you change your lens. Now you only need to take this reference photo once if you use the same lens combination and you're in the same lighting environment. So as you remember, I was shooting with the 24 to 70 on a Nikon D850. This was the photo that I took. But before we create a profile that I can actually use in Lightroom, I need to download a plugin. So in order to download this plugin, we need to go to xrightphoto.com slash camera. We're gonna hit the download software button. And since we're on a PC, we'll download this version. So now that we've installed the plugin, I've reopened Lightroom. And I'm just gonna really quickly do a white balance adjustment. I'm gonna hit the eyedropper here and just hit this uh, medium gray. So that's gonna give us a more accurate white balance. And then I'm gonna go up to File, Export, and then you can see we have the X-Rite Presets Color Checker Passport installed now. So I'm gonna click on that, and I'm just gonna click on this uh, profile name and just change it to Nikon D850 Tamron 24-70. And then I'm gonna hit Export. All right, so now we have the profile created. We do have to restart Lightroom, so let's go ahead and do that. So if we go down here to camera calibration, instead of using, say, Adobe Standard, we can actually scroll down and now see the Nikon D850 Tamron 24 to 70. And if I click that, you can see there is a difference in the, uh, the colors. They actually pop a little bit more. So now that we have this color profile created, we can actually go to our image here. And we can change from Adobe Standard to the Nikon D850 that we just created. And from here, we can now adjust our image knowing that the base colors are exactly as we saw on set. Now, if we were doing a product shoot or say we were shooting for a designer and we wanted these colors to be completely accurate, this would be the end result. I don't think I really want to do that. I want to create kind of a moody image with some colors that are a little more exaggerated. So I'm not going to be as concerned about getting exact colors on set, but I do want to get correct colors from my final edit here on the computer to our printer. So I'm gonna use Lightroom just to make some simple basic adjustments and then I'm gonna throw this image into Photoshop where I'm gonna clean it up just a little bit and give it a final look. So I've just done some really basic edits here. I do like to put alien skin on most of my images so I'm gonna to go to exposure. I'm just gonna put on this uh, Technicolor faded look and hit apply. And I think that's a pretty cool final image. So now that we've done our final edit on our image with a calibrated monitor, the next step would be to send this to a printer. But as you know, we have not calibrated our printer to our entire workflow. So just like we created a custom profile for our monitor, we now need to create a custom profile for our printer and every single paper that we would like to print on with this printer. So let's head back into the i1 Studio software. So now instead of going to display, we're gonna come down to printer calibration and choose color print. So from this menu, we just need to select our printer. Now we're gonna be using the Canon Pro 100 series printer. We are using standard eight and a half by 11 paper. And I'm gonna change the default paper description to the Canon Pro Platinum. That's the paper we're gonna be printing on today. So let's just type in Pro Platinum. And we'll hit print. 
Now, before we hit print on the Canon Pro 100 series, there is something I need to tell you. A lot of printers, especially the Canon printers, they have their own color profile that's embedded in the printer, and if you do not turn that off, you're actually going to mess up the whole process by applying two color profiles. So let me show you how you can turn this off on the Canon printers. You have to go to Preferences, and then here we're going to go to Photo Printing. We're also going to do Borderless Printing, make sure that's checked. We have the Photo Paper Pro Platinum, which is the paper we're using. We're going to change print quality to high. We have to change our print size from 4x6 to the letter 8.5 by 11 and we're also going to go up here to main. And under the main menu, we have color intensity. It's really important to go to manual and then hit set. Go to matching and then we're actually going to turn off all color correction by hitting none. So when we hit okay, okay, and apply. So when I hit print, now I'm going to be able to print off our test sheet from X-Rite without having the native color profile from the Canon driver applied to that image. All right, so our test sheet has printed, and if we hit next, it says that we can start scanning this 10 minutes after this ink has dried. Now, the instructions say to let it dry for about 10 minutes. Because our Canon printer is a dye-based inkjet printer, I would recommend doing an hour so that you get the most accurate reading. So now that we have our test print, I'm going to take our i1 Studio. Let's take it out of this pouch. And so once I have this out of the pouch, I'm basically just going to align the bottom white LED to the white part of column 1 push the button down, hold the button, and then I'm going to just slowly scan over all of the colors in column one until the white LED crosses the last color, goes into the white, and then I let go. And after you do column one, you're just going to do the same thing on column two. And you're going to repeat this until you go through all five columns. Now, if you need a little more instruction on how to actually do this, there is a how to measure print patches button down here, which will give you a little video. But since I went through all five and everything turned out OK, I'm going to hit next. So right now, the software is creating a second test chart that we're going to print out and do the exact same thing on. So now that we have our second chart created, we're going to hit print. And just like before, we're going to wait a good hour to let everything dry. And then we're going to do the same measurement process. All right, so we have made our next test print. And this has dried a good hour. We're going to go ahead and hit next, and we're going to scan the columns just like we did before. So we have successfully done the second calibration. Let's hit next. And from here, we can save our color profile for the actual printer and paper combination that we're going to be using. So since this is the Pro Platinum paper on the Canon Pro 100 series printer, I'm just going to hit Save Profile. And we now have a new color profile saved on our computer. Now, in order to access this color profile that we just created, we do have to save our work and close Photoshop and Lightroom. So let's go ahead and do that. And let's reopen Photoshop. So now our image is ready to be printed. But remember, this is shot at a 2 by 3 ratio, and we're going to be printing on regular paper. So let's go to our crop tool. Let's just go to 8.5 by 11. And we may have to adjust our crop just a little bit. That looks pretty good. And now if I go to File and go to Print, so let's make sure, first of all, our printer is correct. So we have the Pro 100 series chosen. Let's go ahead and go to Print Settings. And we want these settings to be the same as we had before. So photo printing, borderless printing. We have high quality prints, uh, 8 and a half by 11. And let's also go up here to Main and make sure our color intensity is in Manual and our matching is also set to None. So we can save all of this. Let's hit OK. And the final thing we want to do is we want to change Printer Manages Colors to Photoshop Manages Colors. And now what this is going to allow us to do is actually choose the profile that we just created. So the one that we created was called Canon Pro 100 Series Pro Platinum. It may be something else by default, but that's the one we want to choose. And then from there, we have this Rendering Intent. Now, you can choose either Perceptual or Relative. Each one of those is going to print a little bit different depending on what your printer can actually reproduce with the dyes that it has in it. But for right now, let's just go ahead and choose relative and we are good to go. I'm also going to leave the black point compensation checked. So I'm going to hit print and we're going to have our first calibrated print from both our monitor and our X-Rite color checker come out in just a few minutes. All right, so we got our print out. It's been a couple hours now. I've sat back down. Let's pull this off and let's look at this final print. So I have to say, this, this looks pretty incredible. I mean, it does match exactly what I see on the monitor. You know, there might be just a slight variation, maybe like 5%, but this is way better than anything I would have gotten trying to manually adjust my monitor on my own. But out of curiosity, 
Let's go ahead and print this exact same image by turning off all the calibration that we just did and see if it looks anything like this final image. So let's go up to File, let's go to Print, let's go back to Print Settings. We're still going to do high quality, we have the same paper and everything. But now let's go to Main and let's go back to Color Intensity. Let's put this back to Auto. Let's hit OK and let's change Photoshop Manages Color to Printer Manages Color and let's hit print. All right, so we have both prints here, and I have to say, looking at these side by side, the X-Rite definitely looks more like the screen. The difference is actually kind of shocking. I would say this is probably like a 15 to 20 percent difference. It's really only noticeable in the skin tones. Um, the non-calibrated print is definitely more muted, whereas the calibrated print looks exactly like the monitor. So if printing is really important to you and you want your color is exactly the same as what you're seeing on the screen, I definitely think you're going to want to calibrate your monitor and your printer. Now while this was printing, I took the calibrated print and I looked at it on all of the other computer monitors in our office, and what I realized was most all of our computer monitors were just way too bright. As you saw in this tutorial, we had to lower the brightness quite a bit on this monitor, and you can really tell that the prints look much darker than they do on the screens because I think all of our screens are just simply too bright. So this is probably an issue that a lot of photographers have. They take out their screen from the box, it's calibrated so that it's brighter and more vibrant, but then when you actually edit on it and upload to the web or print out on your own printer, the pictures are probably going to look darker than they do on your screen. So if you're a professional photographer and you really want your colors to be super accurate, say you have clients where the colors have to be accurate, or you're like me, maybe a wedding photographer, and you're just really tired of your prints looking nothing like the images on your screen, I think this is an important part of the workflow process that you do not want to overlook. It's going to save you a lot of time, and once your entire system is calibrated, you're going to be able to go out on shoots and just know that everything that you're doing on location looks perfect both on your screen and in the final print. Now today we just really focused on calibrating the monitor and the printer, but this thing does work with scanners and with projectors, so if you are an educator and you like to show your work uh, on a projector, or if you're scanning a lot of work in, you can also use this to get accurate color on all of your devices. So I know this was a long tutorial, and I know it is pretty tedious going through all of these settings and calibrating your entire system, but once it's all done, you do not have to do most of these steps. You only really have to calibrate if you change lenses, you'll have a profile for that. Or if you use different papers in your printer, you might have a few different profiles for each paper that you use. So it's really not that hard once you do it, but it does take some time to set up initially, but I do believe it's gonna save you a lot of time and headache in the long run. So this video was a little different from things that we normally do on our channel. I was really curious to see if this would make a big difference and I'm pleasantly surprised how easy it was to set everything up. If you want more videos like this, subscribe to our YouTube channel below or head over to fstoppers.com for content like this every single day. And if you wanna learn from some of the best photographers, go to fstoppers.com store where you can check out our full length tutorials.